welcome back to Rachel Bella Crafts. Rachel here. I hope you're all well. Um, I'm just going to do a quick video with you today to show you all how to make one of these. So this is a envelope. Obviously, because we're doing envelopes this week, aren't we? Um, and I've made it out of a piece of music paper. You can do this with book pages. You can do it with. Um, these holding pages you know you've got some index pages like this that's ideal um anything you can do it with pattern paper but um it's a great way to use up some different types of book pages and obviously to make something a little bit interesting to add into your journal okay so that's my finished product i'm going to show you how i got there so the first thing that you're going to need to do is get yourself a piece of paper it doesn't matter what size i'm not going to measure anything today you know me, I don't like to measure. Um, and we are literally just going to make a fold. So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to fold it into the center. Line at the bottom and then bring this side over. Now, the only thing that I have done in preparation for folding, when I've taken the book page out of the book, I have you'll notice taken off some of the white from the top up there so this bit here i'm not too worried about but I've, I've narrowed let me show you this side sorry i've narrowed that band there and i've also taken off a little bit of the white here um just so that when we fold it, it you know you're getting mostly then the view of the um the music paper so that will fold over there like that and then we'll have that nice little bit of right in there as you can see on the bottom. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna glue anything just yet. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use a bone folder today. We're not gonna use a sewing machine today. We're just gonna use our hands. So we're gonna very, very carefully and simply fold over the bottom flap. Don't worry about it bulging in the center there. That's fine, because all that's gonna be coming off. And we just want a nice straight line. Now, if you really, really, really have to have this completely, completely straight, then obviously get your scoreboard and your bone folder, but there really is no need. You can just eyeball that. So we want a smallish fold at the bottom. What is that, about a centimetre? Yeah. And then at the top, we're going to come down now for a, quite a large flap. So we're going to want at least double the size then at the top. But like I say, I'm really not going to uh, measure anything. It really doesn't matter. Keep it as simple as we possibly can. Okay, so now that we've made those creases in the paper, I'm going to open it back up. And the first thing I'm going to do, very similar to the one that we did yesterday, um, I'm just going to cut, um, if you look at the piece of paper now, so imagine that's the top of your envelope. We've just unfolded it there. Um, I'm going to cut that section away there, that section away there, that section there, and that section there, because we don't need them, okay? So when you're looking at the ridge where you've just folded as well, position your scissors to the inside of the fold. So you know like sometimes when you cut and you fold, you end up then with that little bit of a curl over. We don't want that. We want to take it down a little bit if possible because um, it's all to do then with the height of the paper. But if, when you cut, just cut very slightly to the side of that fold. And then just leave that there for a second and then come back to that in a minute so I'm going to turn it over again and again just very slightly to the side of that fold and then this side and we're just cutting to the centre line so where you've got that centre fold here we are just cutting up to that bit okay no further and then the last one, we're going to cut. Couldn't find my centre line then. Right, there it is, up there. So now you should have your piece of paper like this, and you should have this here cut, this one here cut, this one here cut, and this one here cut. Now, the reason why it's important to go all the way up to the center fold is because when you cut these edges off if you don't go right to the center you're going to end up with these little bits of paper left over and they're going to get in the way when you're trying to fold your envelope so 
I'm trying not to get my head in the way. There we go. Right. Now, when we... So, fold these bits back in out of the way now so that you've got, like, a kind of a funny H shape. And then, with those held out of the way, you're simply going to take your scissors at an angle. Now, don't cut in because otherwise your flap is going to be short here for, for the when it folds over, if that makes sense. So take your scissors right in the centre there where you were, um, where we had to go to the, the centre line, and then take your flap. If there's anything hanging over, you know you just need to come back again and just neaten that up. Because this edge here should run smooth, and then we're just going to take it in. So I'm going to fold over and do the same thing. But again, just being careful not to cut into that flap. Now, we will be have an opportunity to neaten this up a bit later on, so don't panic too much if they're not the same. Okay, and then we're going to do the same at the bottom. Again, just very narrow cut. And again, the same here. We're just going to tuck that in there too. So what you should now have those over there, is a nice flap shape here now with nothing in the way, and then the same at the top. There we go, and that's that's what I was saying there, obviously if you cut in too much, you'll end up then with a, a, a big gap there, but that's fine. So the next thing that we're gonna do now is glue. Um, obviously don't go too crazy with the glue because uh, we don't want it seeping out underneath. So I find it's easier to just glue carefully down this edge here. That's it. that like that and as per usual in my blue peter fashion you know what I'm gonna say is when I did it earlier because that's a bit wet okay so the next thing that we're gonna do now is um, we're going to now make a shape in the envelope that will give us this lip so can you see what I've done with this one here um, can you see that there? I've cut now so that when I put um, something into the envelope, I can see there's something in there. And when I fold this up, I don't have loads of bulky paper now in the way. So I'm gonna show you now how to do that cut. But so if you imagine that's your envelope there, I can now obviously quite clearly see that there's something in my envelope and it just makes it a bit easier to get out. And it's a nice alternative, I think, to, um, you know, using the circle cutter or, um, as I showed you yesterday, just obviously you can do it, but just eyeballing the line through. So let's just go back to um, this one now. Um, and how we do that is like this. Okay, so this is not my idea. This is an idea that I picked up from watching Pam at the Paper Outpost. Um, and she does something similar to this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the envelope now that we've just glued and we're going to bend it. We're not going to you know, make any extra folds. We're literally going to simply bend it and put your two folded edges together. So you should be holding your envelope now like that. Can you see? And then making sure that that's nice and straight there. Now you are simply going to. Now bear in mind this is the top now, all right? So we're working on the top top entrance, the top entrance, <laughs> the entrance to the envelope. And you take your scissors, and this is always the nerve-wracking bit, and we're going to simply cut in a straight line all the way up to the flap. Okay, so all I've done there is, I haven't gone too deep, because obviously you've got to bear in mind how big your flap is. So I've gone from that angle, and I've just simply cut up there, and that is all I've taken away. Okay, so it's not hacking off loads. And then I'm going to turn it upside down, I'm going to do the same thing now to the bottom, but much shallower because obviously we've only got a little flap here. So we just literally just want to shave off all that bulk by there. So we're going to just go in at about that angle and we're just going to come across to the centre line. Hey, and just take that away. Okay, and hopefully all will have gone according to plan. Yay, and look at that. So now when we fold our envelope over, we don't have any of that annoying um, paper left there under the, the neck of the, the flap. So that goes down nicely. And then when I want to fold up my bottom flap, again, that's all neatly tucked away. So 
Let me have a look. You can see now. Now you can do different variations of that. So you could um, cut diagonally and then take it straight across like a plateau or like a sugar loaf as we call our mountain here. Um, but I just think if you, when you're just starting out, first time you do it, just go for a nice simple diagonal cut. And like I say, so that's all you've taken off the top or that way rather, and that's all we've taken off the bottom. So we're not hacking off loads, don't go too mad because otherwise you're gonna end up folding up and you have a big gap. Um, and just make sure you literally just take it to the edge, okay? Right, before we go any further now, this is the point if you're going to ink, you need to ink because you've still got access to everything. So again, if you pick up the envelope the way we were holding it just now, so folding it back in, Oh, sorry, before I forget as well, while you've got your envelope in this shape, it's a good time to just check that your flaps are even. So if they're slightly out, you can just shave them better into, into shape so that they just look a bit more even and tidy. Actually, that wasn't too bad what I did there. So here we go. But that just gives you a nice access to that and you can see them very they're falling at exactly the same angle. But yeah, that's also an ideal position now to hold your envelope so that you can ink the mouth of the envelope, which is sometimes a bit tricky to do when you've got it folded flat. So there we go. Um, I'm just gonna ink around my flap. So that's that bit there then. I hope everybody's well. We've had the most bizarre morning here. It is the last week of April. And I had the most terrible night's sleep last night. My legs were aching, my hip was aching, tossed and turned all night. I'm like, what's going on? And then I got up this morning and I thought, hmm, I'm not very bright out there. And then that blue sky's gone and the sun. So I went over to the window and looked out and I couldn't believe it. It was snowing. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I'm waiting to put my seeds in the greenhouse. I'm afraid to put anything out because um, it keeps going cold. I had to go out and get another load of wood in last night for the fire because we thought we were done and it was all cleaned away and nope, like the fire, it's cold. Well, I actually give it in, I've got my heating on now this morning because it is cold, very cold. I think they forecast minus one tonight. It's just bonkers. I, I can't remember having weather like this this time of year. I'm sure we have. There's nothing new in the sun, is there? But it just seems very strange, very alien for this time of year for us. So, yeah. Not impressed with that at all. We want that lovely sunshine back we had last week. Plus, mum and dad are now finally very excited moving now on the weekend. So we definitely, definitely could do with some some lovely sunshine. So when you're all saying your prayers, please remember mum and dad and ask us some to have some sunshine back. It'll just make it all a little bit easier, I think. And uh, I know mum's very excited her hand yesterday to sort through some stuff and she's she's de-stashed fair play to her she's a massive de-stash so she uh the, the house they're going into her craft room there is slightly smaller i think than the one she's in at the moment and i know she was starting to panic and she said oh, too much stuff so i was like right i'll bring my car over fill it up <laughs> back to the shop of mum and uh i think i <laughs> I think I came home with, oh my goodness, I think there's about 12 bags of books. <laughs> and I rang my son, I was coming up over the mountain because it's like two big mountains to climb over to come back to our house from where they are at the moment. And uh, I had my son on the phone, on the hands-free in the car. And I said, son, he was like, you all right, mum? I said, yeah. I said, are you home? He said, yeah. I said, good, open the attic, ready. I said, I need to get all these books in. Before the other half gets in from work. <laughs> so we had a chain then. Opened the door, opened the attic. <laughs> the youngest was stood at the top of the stairs, all the stood at the bottom, playing all these books up in the attic. <laughs> Hiding them away. How many of you hide your craft stuff? It's ridiculous, isn't it? Well, no, in all fairness, my craft room's a tip. Once I've done this video today, that's my job today, getting the room done. But uh, I could not have brought all those books in here. I think I'd have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> But yeah, we've got lots of exciting new materials coming up to work with, so uh, that's great because I think Mum unearthed some stuff there that she'd forgotten she had. Okay, so back to our envelope. That is now pretty much done. 
How simple was that? So let me just go back over what I did because I talked in the middle of it and you might have forgotten. So we started out with a piece like this. Maybe it was a piece of paper and we folded it. Folded it? Yeah, that's right. Folded it in like that. And then we folded the bottom up to make the flaps. And then we cut these pieces out. Then after we cut those pieces out, we glued down our center fold. And as I pointed out, I, I cut away, because obviously you see you get like this extra white done on the page. So I cut away the white there, just again, tip from pan, just so that we have a nice visual of all this lovely paper. So again, if you're using um, book pages, again, I've done that with Edith Hall when, when ready there as well. So I've cut it down so the one side has got, but I've left the white on the other side to use as part of the fold, as I've done here. So we've simply stuck that in place, did a little dance while it was drying. Then when it was dry, and here's one I've got that was dry, although I haven't got my flaps cut on this one. We've then taken it in half and We've cut up, imagine your flap is up there because I haven't done it on this one. And we've literally taken then a chunk out and that then has left us with these lovely shapes. So, we are now going to glue the bottom flap closed. And obviously we don't want huge amounts of glue because bearing in mind there's nothing here. So we don't want to glue the bottom of the envelope shut. You know, you want to be able to get your stuff in all the way to the bottom. There we go. So that's... That one there, and then that's that one there. And that one there. Okay. Right, so you know what I'm gonna say now? Now we're gonna decorate them. Now obviously you can use these, um, <coughs> sorry, you can use these envelopes in different ways. So you can either um, put it into your journal and stick it to the page. So think about what you're going to do before you decorate them. Obviously, you might not want to decorate until you put it in the book. But if you're going to do that, you only want to decorate, embellish, sorry, the one side. Whereas if you're going to have it in so that it, you might going to um, either put it in a pocket or you're going to um, paper clip it over the over a book page and over the journal you then want to decorate both sides so what I've done with this one I've just simply added some lace and I've got a nice little pocket in there now so there's a pocket in my pocket and then we've still got our journal in space and our um our journal in space we've got space to put something in to add it into the journal so you could then put that in a tuck spot you could like I say paper clip that in you could put it into a, a fold. Um, there's all sorts of things we can do. So <clears throat> let's just have a quick look then at a few different ways that we can decorate these. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so first and probably quickest way that we can do it. And I'm going to use my pink ink because, well, because I can. And I'm going to be tired of everything being brown. So let's pop that one up there a minute and we'll use this one here. <clears throat> so one of the things that we can do is to simply take a nice stencil. So I'm going to use this one here because it's going to be going into a vintage journal. Again, just thinking about your theme and then simply, she says, dab on our Oh gosh, there's no pressure like stenciling on video, is there? <laughs> I hope that's not shaking the camera right now. Try and do that as carefully as I can. Okay, so there we are. Hopefully that's come out all right now. And again, I say you can, you know, thinking about your inks and your colours. Um, I know I've got a nice teal coloured um, one there, or you could use gold or, or whatever, like I say, depending on your theme. But there we go. So now we've got a nice little stencil background on there. And I might look at that and think, mm, okay, well, that's not quite enough. I could do a bit more with that. So I could, let's add a bit of lace on the bottom, shall we? Just a narrow bit. <clears throat> Again, we don't want to add too much bulk into the journal. So let me just take that bit off here. 
Keep that for a snippet. And we'll add a little bit of glue across here. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, wrong one. Pin that back in place. Right, let's use this one here. And Sorry, that was like slow motion going down over there then. I couldn't decide whether or not to stop at the top and cut it. <laughs> Sorry, the camera didn't freeze. I was just having a brain freeze think moment then. I was thinking, ah, no, shall I level that off? And then I thought, no, let's keep it simple. Okay. Oh, right, so a little bit of glue extra on the end. But you're getting the idea. Um, I posted a hashtag with yesterday's video. <clears throat> It's also on, uh, I don't know how you've found the videos today. Um, if you found it via one of the Facebook groups, I will have put it on the post on the Facebook group as well. Um, I would love to see um, if, if you're going to make these, these envelopes. I'd love to see what you make and how you decorate them. So will you please use the hashtag so that they'll come up? Um, <clears throat> I tend to understand hashtags better on Instagram. I'm not quite sure they work on Facebook. I don't know if you can pick them up from just typing them in. Maybe I'll give it a try. But um, wherever you post your pictures of your... Um, obviously, if you're in our, our Facebook group, great. Pop them in there and, and put the hashtag in there. But uh, if you're going to add them to Instagram, will you just tag them in there and let me have a quick look? Because that would be really good to see what ideas you come up with. And I think it's just great to share all of um, all your creativity. Okay, so... At the top of here now, <clears throat> we're going to try, if I can get these threads to stop pulling out, there we go. So perhaps we'll just add a little bit of um, layering up there now. And uh, da -da 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 -da. perhaps we'll pop one of these in. Our lovely little labels from our new dragonfly kit. I love this little ephemera set. It's just so cute. And of course I printed them all out um, half size when I did the um, how to make a mini journal. And I got some left over and they're just brilliant. So I am going to, um, in my next kit, I am going to print them out and add them like this. I just think they're marvellous when you're trying to work with stuff and you want extra embellishments. It's just a nice size, isn't it? There we go. Now you can add to that then. Again, like I say, depending on how jazzy you want it to be. Um, I, you could use these to decorate. Um, I won't for this one because like I say, this is going to be more of a vintage-y um, journal. So I think I'm just going to finish it off with... Um, not to red again because it is quite old and I might just use a <clears throat> an old button. No, oh, that doesn't look very vintagey, does it? Hmm. Set out with the best of intentions of doing a really quick ah, oh, let's have that one. This will be more vintagey. And then I can't make decisions, it's not good. It's not good. <clears throat> but yeah, there we go. So again, really simple decoration. But it just helps embellish it a little bit. So we've got those two styles there. Now, something else that we can do is decorate with a napkin. So I'm going to get my glue. And I think I'm going to do it on this side. Because I quite like that picture there. So let's just get that back there. Sorry, I should have done that earlier on. I was thinking I was being all organised. There we go. Stay over there, use you later. And I think, yeah, let's have the butterfly and the fairy, because that's super pretty, isn't it? Okay, so let's get some glue on here. 
it's nice to um, be using the napkins. You, I find this, you know, I tend to have a run with them and then put them tidily in the drawer and then they just get forgotten about for ages. So it's been lovely doing all these swaps lately because obviously I've had people sending me new napkins and it's like, oh my gosh, I'd forgotten I could do that. And <clears throat> so it's just definitely good for the inspiration. Right, there we go. Let's just flatten that down there. All our bubbles out. Now, ideally, I would leave that to dry. Do you know, I think I might. No, I won't. Um, right, but I'm short on time. So, let's just slice this off at the top. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave that go over at the top there, actually, because I quite like that. It's a bit, I know it's a bit rough looking, but that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that will look quite cute on the flap. From here. There we go. And there was extra glue. Any bits that need gluing back down later. Okay, and then let's just cut around the edge now. I love this napkin, it's gorgeous. I think that was the last of it, you know, because I used it on the, um, I made some tags with it. I think that they were on uh, music paper as well when I did the, um, the giveaway journal. And I put a few in there. Try and keep those flowers there because they're pretty. There we go. Nothing gets wasted, does it? We just use it on something else later. And then cut that there. Yeah, pop that by there. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So I'll oh I'd have to just take that shorter. Okay, now if you wanted to add a little bit more interest again, now you can um we can add, um, you know, details on it. So I've got this beautiful, beautiful butterfly that I had in the Happy Mail from Barbara. And I think that'll go lovely with this because underneath she's got, it's a two layer die cut and she's got green glittered card underneath. And then she's got the yellow on the top. So I think that's meant to come up there like that. Isn't that lovely? And I think that will just look perfect. On there like that so I'm gonna stick this down decision made you will be very pleased to know I went to the opticians yesterday and finally had my eye test and yes my prescription has gotten worse <laughs> which explains why I can't see what I'm doing so um, I've got uh, new glasses come in readers and distance glasses Ugh. Because she said, yeah, she said, well, of course you are very long-sighted. I've always worn glasses. I've worn glasses since I was about eight years old. Not all the time. I do now, but I just used to wear them for like, headaches then. But uh, she said, yeah, well, it is one of those things you see when we get to a certain age, over 40, and you, they do start to deteriorate a bit quicker then. I said, oh, well, cheers. Thanks for that, love. <laughs> that age now. Okay. But there we go. I think that's rather lovely. So I'm not going to over over embellish that. I think that's fab. Um, and again, then if you're going to just tuck that in over a page, I mean, you can add bits of lace to it. You can um, embellish the back, all sorts of things. But I'm going to leave that at that for now because I think that's rather lovely. Um, and then obviously another idea that you can do. Um, this is just a snippet that I did yesterday. So I'm going to just clip a bit off this and hope that the rest doesn't unravel. Ooh, which bit should we go for? Let's have a bit there with that bit of blue on. That's it. And we link that across. So, yeah, just waiting now to um, have the call to say they're ready. I had to have all these different tests done. My gosh, every time I go, it's, it's like more, you know. Um, I had to put my head in a thing and they blow air in your eye. Didn't like that at all. Um, <laughs> 
and they scanned the back of your eyeball and I could see the picture up on the screen afterwards and I thought, oh gosh, does that look right? Is that healthy? No. Yeah, all good though, thankfully. Um, and then I had to do the one then after where you've got to put the patch on. So I was weak laughing by this point because I just said, well, that's just very fetching, isn't it? Like a pirate now. And uh, you have to then chase like the white light around the um, this plastic dome that you've got to stick your head in. But, oh, yeah, my goodness. I was shattered afterwards. My eyes were certainly very tired after. But um, just relieved to have that done because... Uh, I knew something wasn't right. And um, get a lot of headaches, don't you then, when you're, that's not right, when your eyes need, um, your eye glasses need updating. So, good to keep on top of that. Um, right, what else can we use? I've got some nice embellished um, wallpaper here. So we might take a little bit of that. Again, that'll just add a little bit of dimension. And I might just plonk that underneath there like that. Yep, happy with that. And then we'll put a, um, a word on, on here and perhaps a little bit of fabric. Um, and I think then that'll be that. So, yeah, it's just hoping now we don't want any more snow. And we just want some sunshine. I'm gonna get our plants in the garden. I'm gonna get my seeds in the greenhouse. I, I do think this is possibly the latest that I've put them in. I'm trying to think. It's funny, isn't it? Last year was just such a strange year that I can't remember before. And um, I was trying to think the other day, well, what, when do I normally put my seeds in? Is it really that late or am I? Because I was looking at my flowers in the garden and like, uh, the rhododendrons haven't opened yet and my alliums haven't come up yet. You know, all the green is there, but there's no flower. Um, the daffs have just gone over and the tulips, but um, yes, everything just seems really late. But maybe it isn't really late. Perhaps it's just that we've got nothing else to do but watch the flowers grow. <laughs> We're waiting for them and they're just taking a long time. So perhaps it's just that they're on time and we're just not got anything else distracting us like we normally do. I don't know. Who knows? Everything's moving along here now, nicely in Wales. So um, I think outdoor, you can go to hospitality out to the doors now this week. Um, so that, that I'm sure they, uh, they would welcome the sunshine back. I don't imagine it's particularly nice sitting out doors eating in this weather. We definitely need some sunshine back so that these guys can get their businesses up and running again. Um, yeah, let's put one of these on there, shall we? How do I get in there now? Because they've been sat on my desk winking at me for the last week, saying, please use me. Ooh, now, decisions, which colour? Oh, let's go for that one there, I think. And da -da -da -da, what should I put behind that? Oh, a little bit less. But yeah, so I think the gym's open next week, is it? I know a lot of people are waiting for that. Um, swimming pools, that would be great once they get the indoor pools open. But again, it's with, I don't know how the, whether you've got to like, um, you know, book a slot or something like that. But uh, it would just be so nice to start seeing things go back to some form of normality, eh? Um, and then hopefully summer will come and we'll have a nice bit of weather. Because this weather is very different from this time last year. Because I know this time last year we had a really lovely, um, we had a hot Easter and I know the kids all had their paddling pools out and people were ordering them all online and it was just bonkers. And then the country ran out of hot tubs. <laughs> Just crazy times, weren't they? My goodness. There we go. That's rather nice. I quite like that. Okay, so we'll leave it at that now for today. There are your envelopes. 
So we've got stenciling, we've got napkin, decoupage, we've got um, a snippet and a little bit of more snippets on there. And then we've got lace and then some collage with a pocket. So there's lots of ideas there for you. Um, I will put the hashtag in the description box and I'm going to see if I can be really clever and perhaps add it onto the, the opening bit of the video. Um, but yeah, definitely go make some and please, please share your, your envelopes with me. And uh, the ones that we did yesterday as well from the Edith Holdens if you've got any to do with that. Okay. All right, everyone. Speak to you all soon. Take care and I'll be back with you very soon. Bye now.